All right, so I recently put out a video about this T-Mobile 5G home internet gateway. It's a brand new one, it's a G4AR one, and it has external antenna ports on the bottom of it. And so the most common question on the comments or emails through all of you fans is how did you get it? You know, what do I do to get this? So I do want to cover that, and uh, this policy really applies to all of their gateways, whether you're trying to get this one or some other ones. So I do want to cover that. But before I get too far, I must say this is Nate, and this is the Nader Tater channel. I cover lots of stuff on my channel, but one of the big ones is T-Mobile Home Internet, Verizon Home Internet, AT&T Home Internet, uh, Wi-Fi Smart Home stuff. So thanks for tuning in. Let's get right into how I got this. Now, right now I have this Sagemcom one which is one of their uh, previous ones and i just returned a arcadian kvd 21 gateway which looks similar to this and previously i returned a nokia one as well so currently i have these two gateways and both of these are services that i get as a regular customer i have i've tried <laughs> to be honest with you to get an inside connection with t-mobile and try to work with them on getting some products to try for free but I have not succeeded, so I pay for all of these as a regular customer, you know, the 50 bucks a month um, that uh, the regular customers pay. So how did I get this one? For this one specifically, I do actively try to get them when they come out because I want to cover them and test them out so I can make videos out of them. It is always hard to do that, and there are always a limited supply. And the general rule for T-Mobile is they will not exchange one gateway for another gateway for an existing customer. That's always been their policy, and I understand why. I must also advocate for logic here where they have millions of customers now that they've signed up for 5G home internet, and every time they come out with a new gateway, they can't have everyone raising their hand and say, I want the latest and greatest, or perhaps it's not even the greatest, it's just the latest. So that's their policy. So if you call them or text them on Facebook Messenger or go to their store and say, hey, I have this Agencom, I want this one, uh, the answer is going to be no. And the other thing that they will do is they will do a warranty exchange. So if you're having a problem with your device, it's giving you error codes, it's overheating, it's rebooting, all that kind of stuff, they will do a warranty exchange. And that's what they call it. It's really just a exchange from T-Mobile. It's not a warranty from the company that actually makes it. And they will give you the exact same gateway. So if you have a Sagemcom, they're going to give you a new Sagemcom. They're not going to uh, trade it out for you. Now, the other thing that happens is um, they can only provide you with what they have in stock. So if you were to call them up and ask them for a gateway, the one place I would say they do kind of stretch the line where they're not always being fully truthful is they tell you that they don't get to pick um, what they send you. And that is mostly true that in that they don't get to pick per se, but they can tell you what is going to ship out. And that's the same thing online. If you go online and place an order for this, before you hit the final submit button, it tells you what type of gateway you're going to get. And a 5G gateway A is um, the, sorry, not this one. It's the Arcadian KVD-21 which is the black one. So that A stands for Arcadian. Um, not to be confused, but this is also an Arcadian brand. Um, and then if it is a S, then S is the Sagemcom. If it is a N, then it's the Nokia. So that's pretty straightforward. Now, sometimes they there is another um, uh, letter, or sorry, a number after that le letter. So it'd be like maybe S2 or N2 or A2. And I think that's just the hardware version. Sometimes there's like, you know, a new hardware they come out with, but it's really kind of the same unit. Uh, so that is what I've seen them do there. This one is listed as G4AR. So that's how you can tell in the online system. And sometimes if you're calling in to the support, they don't necessarily know or understand that there's that shorthand code for these different gateways. So just know that A is the KVD21 S is the uh, Sagemcom 5688W, and N is the Nokia uh, 5G21 cylinder gateway. And then this one is the G4AR. So they can tell if you were to go and be placing an order um, which one is going to ship out based off of availability. All that said, the best way 
to actually get the gateway of your choice is to go to a T-Mobile store. And you do, you do need to know that you want to go to a corporate store, not a reseller. And if you go to T-Mobile's website and go to their store locator, it will tell you if it's a T-Mobile store or if it's a T-Mobile reseller. And the difference there is obviously the T-Mobile stores are owned by T-Mobile and they actually have more authority and power and, and you know access than the resellers do. So I always recommend you go to a uh, corporate store. And if they have it in stock, you can typically find ways to do a trade out or exchange or open a new line specifically with that gateway. And you know it, what it is because you have it in your hands when you do that order. So that's probably the best way to do it. The problem is right now, at least mid-September of 2023, corporate stores don't have this one yet. So right now you can only get this through a um, calling them or perhaps an online order. So how did I get it? That's kind of uh, what a lot of people are asking. And I did not play any tricks. What I ended up doing was I had to open up a new line. And if you have two T-Mobile home internet lines on a single T-Mobile account, they will not let you add a third line. So you might have to create a new account and or be a new customer. So that could be your spouse, it could be a family member. You know, they need to open a new account in a new name and depending on your address, it might actually have to be at a new address as well in order to get a hold of the new gateway. For me, I was able to cancel my old line with the Arcadian one that's no longer here. So I just have just the Sagemcom left because I had the Sagemcom and Arcadian uh, both on the same account. So they would not let me add a new one. So I had to cancel the Arcadian KVD21 gateway and do a return for that one and then place an order for a new line for this um, G4AR gateway. So that's how I personally got it. And when I did that, I did make sure I talked to them and said, hey, I want to make sure it is this new white unit G4AR. And they were able to do that. And know that there are a couple different uh, places that you call when you call T-Mobile. There's the sales, there's the tech support um, lines, and there's, uh, I think, maybe a couple other, you know, divisions inside there. The sales line is what I have found that has the most um, visibility of what gateway you're going to get. So if you call tech support to report a problem with your gateway and you go through that automated channel, then they seem to have less ability uh, to really see what's going to happen happen or do anything besides like a warranty exchange or repair which will give you the same gateway so call the sales number i'll put that down below and um, in the video description and then they should be able to confirm which one it is but you will most likely have to open up a new line to do that that said i don't want to encourage everyone to cancel their t-mobile return their gateway and get a new one so i do encourage you instead to watch my video that goes in depth with this gateway. How is it the same or different than the existing ones? And will it really even help you out or not? Or is it just going to be a bit of a hassle for you? Uh, because people do also express issues getting things returned. There are many folks I've seen online, I'm sure it's a small fraction of the total population, but they report that they return a device, they even have a UPS shipping label confirmation that is uh, delivered to T-Mobile. And they're getting charged 370 bucks on their T-Mobile bill and they can't get it off. So the other thing I always recommend is I return my gateway in person to the store and then I get a receipt. In fact, I have one right here. This is my receipt from the Arcadian one that I just returned. And I get a printout when I leave. It has the IMEI number. It has the store I returned it to. It has the SKUI and you know the date and so it shows me that it's returned and processed so i have a hard copy from t-mobile itself that a device was returned i've never had a problem doing it that way so i hope that transparency really helps you understand how i get it and i hope it also explains to you why you don't need to go through the hassle of canceling and getting a new line just to get the new shiny penny it really does not help all the customers that much typically a lot of the gateways are very similar in their performance uh, in the same location there are some nuances here and there but for most customers it is not a big change so hopefully that clears things up for you for some of you maybe it does make um, all the difference in the world for the rest of you i would say hang tight especially if it's not broke don't fix it 
So uh, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more as always, and we'll talk to you later.